My next guest is a former MP and Shadow Health Secretary. She's written a number of successful books, both fiction and non-fiction, and she made a memorable appearance on the BBC Strictly Come Dancing a couple of years ago. She joins me on the line now from her home. Anne Whittacombe, good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon. Always a pleasure, Anne. Thanks for doing it. Um, now, Pope Francis. Um, he is getting extraordinarily good press in the, yep. in the, in the broadsheets across Europe. Um, he's not been in the job very long. Um, some people are saying that, you know, he wasn't, he didn't have a very hard act to follow because there wasn't a lot. Um, I don't know, I, didn't, I personally didn't feel that um, Pope Benedict, his um, predecessor, had a lot of charisma. Um, some people are sceptical, Anne. Because of the problems the church has had in recent years, you know you're talking to an Irish guy. I grew up in Ireland. I know personal, I, I personally know young men and women who were abused at the hands of priests in Ireland. So we're, we're being told that this previous guy wasn't a very diffi difficult guy to follow and that we shouldn't get too excited about Pope Francis just yet because maybe the Catholic Church are doing, uh, doing a massive PR job on this guy. What says Anne Whittacombe? Well, I don't say that. First of all, I disagree with you entirely about Pope Benedict. Uh, I think Pope Benedict was an ideal transition between one very long-serving pope with huge charisma, John Paul II, uh, and the uh, Pope that we, uh, that we now have, who won't be so long-serving because of the, uh, the age issue, but who is nevertheless very charismatic. And I think we needed that period uh, of quiet transition, and uh, Ratzengerasi then was uh, actually provided that. So I'm, I'm an admirer of Benedict. Um, but having said that, um, I don't think the Catholic Church does PR. I don't think it knows what PR is if it stands up and smacks it on the nose, quite honestly. Um, if it did, it would have done a lot. It would have done a lot more over the um, over the child abuse issue, and it would do a lot more over the huge contribution that the Catholic Church makes uh, in the third world. But it doesn't regard PR as its mission. I think what you're seeing here um, is is perfectly genuine. I think that Pope Francis has a different style of doing things. Not living in the Vatican, for example. Uh, wants to put a huge amount of emphasis because of the experience of, of where he had his ministry, wants to put a huge amount of emphasis on the poor, um, is uh, ringing a lot of sympathetic bells by doing so, but I think it's genuine. I don't think it's PR. I don't think Catholic Church can do PR. Let me go back to Pope Benedict, because you'll know that a lot of Irish people... Now, one of the things I like about you, and I've always liked talking to you, is one of the reasons being that you um, speak your mind, you've never been whipped, and uh, you say what you feel. But um, Pope Benedict, um, Cardinal Ratzinger as he was back in the day, we know for a fact, Anne, that he was complicit in the cover-up in my country, in Ireland, where he was instructing bishops not to talk to the police and to move some of these priests that were suspected of child abuse, uh, to move them on, to move them out of that community and move them on elsewhere. And I would describe that as criminal behaviour. Well, I think you ought to look at the times in which this was taking place. And this is something which I always say. Um, and that is this. Uh, in the late 70s and 80s, um, child abuse was not understood. The National Council of Civil Liberties, which had um, as its senior officers people like Harriet Harman and Patricia Hewitt, very respectable people, um, actually allowed affiliation to the National Council of Civil Liberties from the Paedophile Information Exchange. We had no sex offenders register. I did Samaritan training at the time, and we were not told ever uh, that we should uh, involve the police. Uh, we were told to treat it in exactly the same way as everything else with which we dealt. So it isn't, and magistrates and judges were handing out fairly minimal sentences, um, and there was a failure to understand its essentially repetitive nature. So the church did think, and the church has admitted it thought, that if it detached a priest from the child and moved him on somewhere else, it was a bit like detaching a priest from a woman. Um, instead of realizing that it wasn't the child individually, it was a child. Um, so I don't think you can say that the church should have had a knowledge which all the rest of... And a quick word on the coalition government. Um, you'd expect that I have plenty of criticism for them. Um, I don't believe austerity measures are working. I don't believe that constantly hammering the poor and not taxing massive corporations is the way to go to get us out of this uh, economic mess that we're in. How do you think they're dealing with it, George Osborne and David Cameron? I think... <coughs> Sorry, hang on. <coughs> One of those winter colds, I'm afraid. Hard I think, hear. actually, that George Osborne has done a good job on the economy. 
Um, everybody said what you said, which was that the austerity measures weren't working. Uh, but there are, are now, as even his critics admit, plenty of signs that the economy is actually turning around. I think he's done a, a very good job. I don't like coalitions because I don't think you get uh, the sort of clear direction that you get uh, when you have one party government. Um, but I don't think that this one, in the circumstances, which are difficult, has done a bad job. And it's always good to talk to you. Have a nice Christmas. Hope to talk to you again in the new year. And you. Bye, Bye. for now.